I'd like to thank uh, Tom and the folks at ATPCO for inviting me to come and participate in this talk, and also for the uh, great support that they've provided uh, in the Dynamic Pricing Working Group. I'm one of the uh, industry co-chairs of the Dynamic uh, Pricing Working Group, and I'm gonna elaborate a little bit on some of the things that Tom said, as well as Peter, Manish, and John, as well as some of the previous speakers. So, so there's a lot of information on, on this particular slide, but really I just wanted to point out two things. First of all, the airline pricing isn't really, the dynamic pricing isn't really new. It's been discussed in various forms for more than a decade. But there was little progress made, and one of the big impediments to that progress was a lack of standardization. In terms of uh, uh, dynamic pricing engines, really the requirement was for an airline's dynamic pricing engine to be able to hook up into the Sabre GDS, Worldspan, Amadeus, and other airline reservation systems. And so the main motivation in terms of what we've been trying to do with the working group is to bring that a little closer to uh, reality by creating sort of the USB standard, right? To find the APIs and everything that are needed for that. So an airline can either build its own dynamic pricing engine or choose a vendor product and be able to relatively seamlessly have that working uh, in the various distribution channels. Secondly, I wanted to really point out about the, the benefits. Um, here, I was mentioning some of the figures that were quoted uh, in the AgriForce community, but you've heard it from some of the other speakers. Peter um, uh, cited some values. Manish and uh, John had also gone ahead and cited values, and they've all ranged in sort of this area, you know, ranging from like, say, one to 10%. And we've observed um, similar sorts of things in terms of actual uh, implementations and consulting engagements we've had with customers. So these numbers, you know, are, are really real. Um, the main thing I wanted to emphasize in my talk, besides talking a little bit about the progress we've made on the pilot, was sort of one other dimension that I, I think the, uh, some of the other speakers haven't really uh, talked about yet. So <clears throat> in terms of the way I typically think of dynamic pricing, um, this uh, figure on the bottom, and I'm sorry if that's hard for some of the folks in the back to read, uh, but really we see sort of three different elements that play a role in terms of uh, airline dynamic pricing. One of them is the customer retail. And of course, you've heard about that. Peter spent a lot of talk about some of Michael Whitman's work in that area, and there's been a lot of research on the uh, customer willingness to pay uh, and incorporating that, as well as some of the other customer information that I think both John and Manish talked about as a factor in the dynamic pricing decision. Secondly is uh, inventory. Um, I bring that up here. John made the point that, strictly speaking, uh, in dynamic pricing world, there's really, you know, sort of the end state is there's no need for availability. But in terms of the, the specifications uh, that we've uh, been working on with ATP Co, we really wanted to provide a solution that would work with existing uh, travel industry distribution standards. So our goal was to try to go ahead and have something that could be implemented essentially with today's, today's uh, travel industry standards, um, but also to be able to um, provide something that would be uh, NDC friendly so that as, NDC, as airlines move you know, towards NDC, that they could have the dynamic pricing that they've done in the traditional um, distribution channels and apply that towards an NDC environment in the future. So those are some of our objectives. And, and for an inventory kind of plays a role in the current, an important role in the current system. The third part though, and this is sort of the one that I don't think has really been emphasized by the other speakers, but I did want to talk about because I think it's important, is what um, uh, I call market adaptive pricing. And market of adaptive pricing is really considering uh, competition. And I'll go and have uh, some slides that talk about that. Peter talked about competition in sort of a macro sense, okay? And of course, of course to an audience of airline pricing people, uh, you know, that's obviously a very important consideration. But I think it also plays an important role at kind of a microscopic level, level on a transaction by transaction basis. And we'll go through an example of that. So uh, Alex Cosmos, um, uh, Peter, several of the speakers have, uh, have talked about uh, factors affecting consumer choice. And one of the risks that uh, Peter talked about was this risk of kind of um, downward revenue, sp downward price spiral spiraling and effects that could occur with uh, dynamic pricing. Well, part of that would be if we consider prices really being the only factor. And of course, in Peter's slide, that was the case. But we've heard from some of the other speakers. Rob Albrecht from Route Happy 
talked a lot about you know, the different considerations that come into play and some of the things that some of the experiments that they've done where they've actually shown how price isn't the only consideration. They had some pretty spectacular um, um, success stories to show in terms of being able to upsell um, customers into other products. So it's not just about price. There's, there's other factors to consider. There's schedule quality. There's brand effects. You know, I think competition plays a role as well. And uh, really, the customer choice models, um, I mean, the two things for that are, number one, is gathering data. It, particularly for the market adaptive pricing, we really need to get information on what the current competitive conditions are. Um, once we have that, then we can apply customer choice models to try to go take into consideration how is how are our airlines itineraries positioned relative to the competition for specific origin, destination, outbound date, return date combinations. And then finally, there's the price optimization. And when I say optimization, that could be either using science-based models uh, like what we've uh, developed at Sabre, or it could even just be rules, positioning rules that really take into account um, um, how, how the airline's positioned relative to the competitors. So. Here's an example. This is just a, an agency low fare search uh, on Sabre. And uh, I just showed the first three itineraries that came back up. This was about the third or fourth example that I actually did on Sabre. So I mean, I think it's pretty common to kind of see these sorts of results. And I wasn't trying to pick on Aeroflot or Icelandic Air or Qatar specifically. But here's a real life example. And this is the kind of thing that you see when you actually do low fare search. As I think airline, uh, pricing folks, you typically are kind of thinking of matching the fares and you're thinking at a really macro level. But when you actually get down to look at the individual um, shopping results, you, you see results like this. They're very common. Now, I'm going to ask for a little bit of audience participation here and say, based on what you can see here, here's uh, an Aeroflot itinerary that's come back going via Moscow. Okay, uh, This particular one has the um, shortest elapsed time by about a half an hour. And uh, it's a one stop. The second, it's priced at $370. The next one is a combination, it's an interline with Icelandic Air and SAS going via Reykjavik and uh, Stockholm. Um, and this surprisingly isn't a whole lot longer in terms of time, it's a little bit longer, but uh, a, a lot higher on price. And then there's a Qatar example um, from JFK to uh, Athens via Doha, okay? Which in this particular case is the highest priced of the three and is uh, longest just because of the particular routing going via Doha. So if you were in charge uh, of setting up the rules and a dynamic pricing engine and everything, and you had this particular example coming up, okay, uh, for JFK to Athens, and you're at Aeroflot, what would you suggest doing? Yes, a little louder, please. Okay, okay. So, so you can kind of see where their price is positioned relative to the other guys. If you're in um, Iceland, Icelandic Air and um, SAS, what might you consider doing? Okay, and if you're a Qatar, and we might have some folks from Qatar here, so feel free to chip in. <laughs> but you can see um, in terms, Qatar it's a little bit, a little bit different than the, this example. I mean, the price is a little bit higher, but then again, it's roughly the same. You know, they're both one stops, so it's maybe not quite cu as cut and dry. But I think you can get the idea. Um, the, the, the working group that we're doing does not, um, we're not talking about the business logic that goes in the dynamic pricing engine. That's really for the airlines and the vendors, you know, to, to really go ahead and define. What we're all about is really creating the APIs to provide the opportunity to start applying rules and start to address these kinds of problems that we actually see in the real world. So on the pilot, Tom had presented um, a slide earlier that talked about um, the, the overall workflow and everything related to the pilot. And what I'm showing here is that <clears throat> we've, as uh, Manish had pointed out, what we've done for the pilot project is uh, we've taken the the um, working specification that was ratified uh, back in February of uh, this year. And we've since then been working to create a virtual instance of Sabre, Sabre uh, shopping and pricing primarily. You can see the items in green here are the things we've actually included in the pilot. So I've created this virtual instance, instance of Sabre. And right now we've had um, 
both uh, Sabre's dynamic pricing engine as well as Fairlogic's uh, dynamic pricing engines. No specific airline partners yet, but of course they're invited to participate in this as well. And um, we've, we've got those actually communicating using um, shopping results being returned from Sabre and also uh, pricing results. Um, the progress on this, and we're also checking uh, inventory uh, as part of that process as well. Um, the progress on this right now is that we've been able to validate the, uh, we've been able to take the, uh, the working group uh, specifications and basically take them down just in a little bit more detail. The specific um, data elements to include the formats, et cetera, okay? And we've been able to kind of take that information to work with, um, uh, with Sabre and with uh, Fair Logics. Uh, we've been ac actually uh, able to get transactions to kind of go through this, including sending outputs to ATP Co. Uh, but the work on that is still ongoing. Uh, we anticipate having the, the pilot with actual live transactions, uh, potentially at volume and everything completed towards the end of this year. And then uh, early next year, we're gonna report um, those results uh, back to the, um, uh, the next meeting of the Dynamic Pricing Working Group uh, and propose the more detailed specifications with the actual data format schemas, et cetera. So with that, that uh, concludes uh, my talk.